So um, today we're going to begin with a report from the Kansas Department of Health and Environment uh, the agency. And then we will, after we're done, conclude that, we will go back and do catch up on the other agencies that we need to finish up. So um, we begin with um, Victoria, you want to start with the overview? So welcome back to the committee. And Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the Department of Health and Environment's budget analysis, the white document I usually work from, um, was actually handed out last week, I think, is originally on the schedule last week, so hopefully you can find it in your folders. <laughs> uh, while you find it, one thing I do want to comment on um, this budget analysis, it is actually the document for the entire uh, Kansas Department of Health and Environment. So this committee is just going to hear the environment division, but in this document it does have the health stuff, so which is why it's so large. Um, if you have questions about the health stuff, I'll gladly find out for you, but I don't actually cover that agency. So just wanted to warn you, there's a lot of health stuff in here. Thank you for bringing that up about the environment piece only. So yep. thank you. So the environment part of uh, KDHE environment actually starts on page 73 of your document, right towards the back. So on page 73, you can see um, a breakout of the Division of Environment's six bureaus and a short description of each. And I'll move straight to page 74 for the actual budget. On page 74, I'm looking underneath the box, the agency estimates revised 2021 expenditures of $93.9 million, including $4.9 million state general fund. This is an all funds increase of $24 million and a state general fund increase of $243,000 above the approved amount. That state general fund increase is due to the agency's supplemental request for laboratory equipment. And to look at the all funds increase, we'll move to the next page. That's page 75. Of that $24 million increase between the approved and the revised estimate, 20 million of that is CARES money. So the agency received 20 million in CARES money. And the majority of that, well, all of it, um, went to testing supplies and testing equipment. For, um, because the Division of Environment actually has the laboratory for all of KDHE, so any COVID test that they do actually falls under environment because they have the laboratory within Division of Environment. So that's why they got the CARES money for COVID testing. As well as that $20 million in CARES money, there's also a slight increase in staffing. The agency hired uh, 18 new people for their laboratory in order to handle the amount of COVID testing they were now required to do. So there's also an increase in staffing. On page 76, towards the top of the page, the governor recommends 2021 environment division expenditures of 93.3 million. This is an all funds decrease of 567,000, including a state general fund decrease of 601,000. Both decreases are caused by the governor recommending lapsing 351,000 in reappropriation. So generally the agency is allowed to roll over state general fund dollars between years if they're unspent. Uh, the governor recommended that they not receive those reappropriations. So that's the, uh, the $351,000 decrease. That decrease is slightly offset by the governor recommending an additional 33,000 in CARES money for wastewater testing. Uh, for the, to put it very simply, um, there's a study that says that you can test wastewater to judge how much coronavirus infection is in that community. So they received $33,000 to perform such testing. And Mr. Chairman, I'll just do fiscal year 2022. Still on page 76, in the middle, the agency requests 2022 expenditures of 72 million, including 4.7 million state general fund. This is an all funds decrease of 21.9 million below the agency's revised estimate. That $21.9 million decrease is primarily caused by there no longer being CARES money in 2022. So remember they got 20 million in CARES money in 21. That's not there in 22. So there's a decrease in expenditures. On page 77, 
That last paragraph, the governor recommends $71.7 million for fiscal year 2022. This is a decrease of $295,000 below the agency's request. That's because the governor did not recommend the agency's enhancement request for laboratory equipment. You'll remember in 21, they also had a supplemental request, and we'll turn to look at those. They're toward the front of the document. The supplemental request is on page 43. I'll give you just a second. On page 43, you'll see um, primarily health-related supplementals, but toward the bottom of the page, re replacement laboratory equipment. For fiscal year 21, the agency asked for 250,000, all from state general fund, to replace laboratory equipment, and you can see a description of those on page 43. And for their enhancement request, move to page 49. On page 49, again, looking at that re replacement laboratory equipment for fiscal year 22, the agency requested $295,000 from the state general fund for replacement laboratory equipment. And again, you can see a description. And again, the governor did not recommend either one of those uh, requests for replacement equipment for 21 or 22. And Mr. Chairman, I'll stand for questions on the Division of Environment. Hey, thank you, Victoria. Any questions for Victoria? Committee? Uh, Senator Straub. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Victoria, you said that the, the, the environment part of KDHE received $20 million in the CARES funds for testing, for uh, COVID testing. Was, was that where all of the testing money came out of, or was there also money in the health side that was used for testing? I, I don't want to say um, that, that it was all of it for sure because I don't know hypothetically if there was money for, I don't know if you consider contact tracing as part of testing, but I will say anything to do with the physical labor of the test will be an environment because that's where the laboratory is. So, I, I, But I won't comment on contact tracing. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for, yeah, thank you. Any other questions for Victoria? Senator Beck. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You mentioned that for FY20, the th this is really interesting and strange trying to hop back and forth when it looks like to me they could almost be separate. Anyway, back to what I, my question was. Uh, you said that there was a $20 million reduction in 22 because of the CARES money. I understand that. What about the employees? You had said that there were 18 additional employees for 21. Are those 18 additional employees put back into the job search market, or is the agency hanging on to them? No, there, um, there was not a, a, a decrease in expenditures from 21 to 22, so um, those, and those, the FTE count also did not change. So I believe that the agency plans on continuing to employ those in, um, additional employees. But I did hear you right, that they, there were 18 additional employees brought in in what, 21? Correct, yes. And they're planning on hanging on to them? As far as I'm aware, yes. Okay, <laughs> and I'm sure the agency can answer that. Sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, <clears throat> anybody else, committee? Seeing none, thank you, Victoria, very much. Next, we'll call on Leo Henning uh, to give a report on, on the budget and uh, the agency. So welcome to committee there, Leo. Got us? Can you hear me now? There you go. You're on. Okay. All right. Well, well, thank you, Chairman and Timmy, and the committee members. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, so give me just a second. Can you see my screen now? There you go. That's right. All right. Great. 
All right, well, thank you for allowing me to come in and talk to the committee regarding our budget. Uh, again, my name is Leo Henney. I am the Deputy Secretary and Director of Environment at KDAT. And uh, I know time is precious, so I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. And that way we can answer more questions at the end. So, if you're ready, I'm gonna proceed. Go right ahead. All right, thank you. So just an overview of KDHE as discussed earlier. Uh, there are three main divisions within the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, Public Health, Division of Environment, which is what we are going to talk about today, and then the Division of Healthcare Finance, which is the state's Medicaid program. The mission of the agency is to protect and improve the health and environment of Kansas. And the way our division does the environment does this is by ensuring that we all have clean air to breathe, clean water to drink, and clean soils to live on. KDHE implements many of the federal environmental acts. This is a listing of the environmental acts that we implement for the federal government or instead of EPA. As you can see, most of these laws have been around since the 60s, 70s. So there's these laws have been around for 40, 50 years. So there's not been a lot of new federal laws regarding the environment. Uh, naturally, there are updates to these, but uh, most of them have been around for quite some time and most industry understand them and comply with them very well. Um, we, most of these laws are or permitting. They allow a person to run a business and when they have a business and have a waste that has to be handled somehow, uh, whether it's an emission from a stack, whether it's a discharge to a stream, uh, they ask us to uh, you know, they have to have a permit to allow that discharge to be allowed into the environment in such a manner that it does not harm the environment or human health. So most of these are, are federal acts except for permitting, except for the Superfund law, which is the cleanup law. But all the other ones, you have to have, you receive a permit to allow discharges. So uh, that's about all I'm gonna say on that slide. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the relationship between the Environmental Protection Agency and KDHE. Historically, we've had a, a good relationship with our Kansas City counterparts in Region 7. Um, the way it works is they provide financial support to the division to implement those federal laws that I just highlighted. They also provide program reviews to make sure that we are implementing those programs as was intended. So, and what they receive back from us is outcomes and, and uh, reporting so that they can take that information and roll it up for the nation so that they can show Congress that how well the programs are doing on a national level. So, one of the things I want to make sure we understand is that these programs are audited by EPA. They will actually come in, review our files, review our processes, and just to make sure that we are complying with the federal laws. And they, EPA can insert themselves into any uh, decision that we make. Most of the time they don't, they go with what we have come up with, but if they don't believe we are implementing the program as was designed, that they can insert themselves into the into any decisions that we make. Uh, and then ultimately, if they feel like KDHE is not implementing the program, and we have program failure, they can take the program back from KDHE because all these programs are delegated to the state. When the laws were passed, they were meant to be implemented by the state. 
but they have an overview and oversight uh, portion and they ensure that the programs are being run as they were intended to be run. A little bit about the employees here. This is a list of disciplines that most of our employees are uh, highly educated uh, group of individuals and uh, we do have a few support staff as far as administrative assistance and fiscal assistance, but predominantly most of our staff fall into these categories of staffing. We are located throughout the state. Most of our employees are here in Topeka, but we have district offices in Lawrence, Salina, Hayes, Dodge City, Wichita, and Chinook. We also have two satellite offices, one in Frontenac, in Southeast Kansas, which implements the coal reclamation work. And then we have a satellite office out in Ulysses, mostly for the large CAFO operator, confined animal operations out in Southwest Kansas. Here's a cheat sheet. If you guys would ever want to know what programs are in what bureau, this is a one page uh, handout that we have that you can see and if you have a question, which bureau you should go to to ask the question to, and you can always ask me and I will get you to the right place. So I'm going to go over those bureaus very quickly. Um, as we were talking earlier, we had the Kansas Health and Environmental Laboratory. Uh, they perform all the environmental testing or, or many of the environmental testing for, the pro for our programs but they provide over 95% of the environmental testing for the public drinking water supply systems in the state. Uh, the health test uh, is the public health testing. Uh, it includes the newborn screening program, uh, testing for influenza, tuberculosis. If there's ever an emergency like a food poisoning out or a white powder incidence, that's handled there. And then most recently, the most important thing that we've been doing is the COVID testing for the state. Uh, other smaller programs, the breath alcohol program is a program in which we certify law enforcement and their instruments to for uh, breath alcohol tests to make sure that that information will stand up in a court of law. And then the last one there is the lab certification programs where we go out and certify environmental and health laboratories to verify that the results that they are providing are reliable results that people can make decisions with. Next, Bureau of Water. Some of the programs within the Bureau is wastewater treatment discharges. This is from point sources like lagoons or an industrial output so to surface water. So they regulate that. They also regulate the Safe Drinking Water Act and the uh, drinking water systems in the state. Uh, they also establish surface water quality standards for the surface water. They also implement the TMDL program, Total Maximum Daily Load Program, which is a way to bring streams that are out of compliance with uh, some contaminant back into compliance. And then the state revolving loan programs, which provide low interest loans to wastewater and drinking water systems to improve their systems. Bureau waste management is much like it says, it's about waste, whether it's solid waste at landfills or hazardous waste from industry, uh, they implement the RICRA program, Resource Conservation Recovery Act, which is again another federal act. Uh, they implement that to make sure that the waste is handled correctly and safe. Uh, they also have programs in the solid waste program to, for, with the municipalities and private industry for composting, uh, recycling. They provide information and money on household hazardous waste programs at the counties. They also administer the waste tire program. So anything to do with waste is in the Bureau of Waste Management. 
Environmental Remediation. This is the cleanup group. They do cleanup work at underground storage tank sites, Superfund sites, different state cleanup programs. They also have programs to help redevelop uh, contaminated sites to bring them back into productive use. And then there's the surface mining uh, work that is done down in Frontenac to reclaim uh, the old strip mine areas. Bureau of, of uh, Field Services, that is where the district offices are located. There are eyes and ears. Uh, they also provide local support to the counties. Uh, they investigate complaints. And all of the inspectors that work for the programs for air, water, waste are located in the district offices and, and provide technical assistance to people that need help. And, but they also do the inspections to make sure people are complying with the permits that they have. There are the livestock waste management section for feedlots or CAFOs, the fine animal feeding operations, is located there. Uh, the watershed restoration protection strategy program is there. It is for non point sources. Uh, it's an EPA funded program to help implement uh, best management practices to reduce runoff from uh, non point sources. Uh, we also help the counties, mainly the sanitarians, implement uh, the local environmental protection, which usually is surrounded around septic tanks. And then we have the drinking water protection program, which is a relatively new program that assess groundwater contaminants that could be impacting drinking water. Class. There's our air permitting program, which is in the Bureau of Air. They implement the Clean Air Act. It is a permitted and compliance program. Again, it is for people that are in our uh, facilities that are emitting into the air. It sets up what those standards are and what those quantities can be. Uh, two uh, of the smaller programs in there is the asbestos program, which license contractors that do asbestos uh, abatement. Uh, they ensure that the asbestos is removed correctly and is disposed of correctly. Uh, the lead program for homes is a program that trains contractors that do lead abatement in homes. So that's an overview very quickly of what KDHE does, the Division of Environment. And so I will now go on to the fiscal portion of our discussion. Uh, I do want to point out that this budget was put together in July of last year with, uh, with many assumptions. Uh, it is, 21 was an odd year uh, because of COVID. And in July, when we were putting this budget together, we figured 20 million extra money in the CARES Act, which is down in the federal, that yellow portion of the pie. Uh, that is not a normal year. As we mentioned, we received $21 million. We were budgeted $21 million in this document for COVID testing. I believe we have spent well over $85 million doing COVID testing. Uh, so you got to remember that when this budget was put together back in July, uh, that's the best we could have done then. We had no idea that the amount of testing requirements the COVID is going to go where it has gone. Uh, so uh, we receive about 4.65% of state general funds, and that's pretty average. And uh, about 4 million in state water plan. We collect about $18 million in fees. Most of those fees are from the air quality, the tipping fees for landfills, and then application and permitting fees. And then the trust fund, which is the larger blue pie at the very top, that is mostly our underground storage tank trust fund. So that's our source for funding. But like I said, this is not a normal year. We have a lot of federal dollars that will not show up in later years. So to balance the budget, our commodities are about $14 million more than normal. That is all 
for uh, COVID, uh, mostly buying the test kits for doing the COVID testing. And then uh, our capital outlay is about 5.8 million more than what we normally have. Uh, that is as we had to renovate the lab somewhat to bring in new equipment to do all the COVID testing. So uh, there are other in things in there. You know, any any purchase over than five, more than five thousand dollars is listed as a capital outlay, and so that would include uh, things like IT upgrades, like servers and things like that, and vehicles and things like that. So, uh, but but again, this is an odd budget because these are not normal amounts. So I will go to the twenty-two. And I would say this is more of our normal amount. Our total budget here is 71 million. And you can see our federal dollars dropped by that $21 million that was talked about earlier. Um, and I would consider this more of a normal environmental budget. Expenditures are more reflective also of how we spend our money Again, because COVID is not located within this budget. So I'm going to go on to just some discussion about budgeted and expenditures. This is a graph showing over time how our budgets have changed. Uh, the blue line on the bottom is our state general funds. And the actual amounts are listed across the bottom, so you can actually see the actual dollar values if you'd like. But in, in FY11, we used to receive $7.5 million of state general funds to for program support. Uh, right now, we are at $4.3 million, and in FY22, we are being asked to reduce it down to about $3.9 million. Our federal money that we received from EPA for program support has come down also from 21 million to now 16 million. The green line, which is the fees that we collect, have gone up over time. And that is just because if our state general fund continues to reduce, our fees that we receive from the federal government continue to reduce. We have to make up that difference somewhere. And the only place we can do that is within our fee structure. So that is why you see that our fees have gone up over time. Here's a discussion about the proposed general fund uh, reductions in 22, the proposed government's I um, mean, governor's recommendation. Uh, again, we we'll see the chart over time. Uh, we are receiving much less state general fund support than what we have historically, and it is getting down below uh, the four million dollar line. Well, it will be. Um, with the reductions that are being asked for in twenty-two. Our direction has been we will need to take the four and a, uh, $450,000 reduction. And the direction we've been given is that we should raise fees to make up that difference. Uh, I'm a little concerned about raising fees. I know the legislators are also. But this is the direction that we've been asked to go by the current administration and previous administrations have, have have given us guidance to raise fees because we're not going to provide state general funds for program support. So I'm just bringing this to light. I know this already, but I know that there's a concern about KDHE and all agencies raising fees, but this is the direction that we've been given. And as long as we continue to state at state general funds, it's the only direction we can go. 
So here's the $437,000 reduction that the 22 that we've been asked to take. Uh, Bureau of Water uh, is, is reduced by 43,000. Bureau of Environmental Remediation will reduce 156,000. The laboratory who needs the equipment is also being asked to take a $104,000 SGF reduction. And then the Bureau of Field Services is asked to take a $132,000 reduction. And most of that will come out of the, out of the confined feeding operations program. And because that's where we're going to hold a, a, an engineering position and uh, an administrative position open. Uh, I have concerns about that. I think you all remember a few years ago, uh, there was a much concern about it being having permits being backlogged in the CAFOs program. And at that time, uh, an additional $100,000 was put into this budget to help to hire an engineer and that assistant to work through those backlogs. Now we will be giving that money back. So I hope uh, it's probably going to happen. We will start backlogging CAFOs permits again. So let's talk about the enhancement request real quick. We requested 250,000 in 21 and 295,000 in 22 to replace aging equipment. Uh, we have to replace this equipment uh, or we're gonna have to not be able to do drinking water testing anymore. Uh, it's coming to a place where our equipment is, is getting close to being out of, out of useful service. Uh, uh, we have asked for this equipment numerous years and have not received the enhancements that we've asked for over years. And uh, we have just come to the point where things are, are pretty difficult out of the lab to do environmental testing. Uh, we have a piece of equipment that we need for doing the environmental testing out at Wolf Creek. And right now uh, that machine is down and uh, we actually have to send those samples out to a private lab to do a portion of that sampling. So we should be able to do all of the uranium or radioactive uh, testing in the house. So with that, I'm gonna close the discussion on the fiscal impacts I do want to talk about some of the accomplishments that we have done through 2020. Uh, KHEL has provided 245,000 COVID results in 2020. We were we went from not being able to provide results for COVID in February to where now we can do 7,500 COVID tests a day. So we have ramped that up to meet the demand. And uh, we, we were the first lab in the state to provide COVID testing. And we still provide no cost testing to our residents if they need uh, or want to know if they have COVID or not. Uh, Kansas Air is meeting all the air quality standards throughout the state. It doesn't mean that we're not emitting uh, contaminants into the air but we are meeting standards. We need to continue regulating that under the Clean Air Act to ensure that we do keep uh, our air clean. But right now, our last area of non-attainment is in attainment. So we are making great progress on that. And so uh, it's good to know that you have clean air to breathe. Uh, a quick little environmental program uh, result was in the, the city of Claflin, where public well became contaminated with 1,2-DCA, uh, which is a additive in gasoline, and with carbon tet, which is a fumigant that's used at grain uh, storage facilities. We, it was an emergency. That was the well that they used for their drinking water. So we spent $1.3 million putting on a system out there to treat the water so that the water's clean and they can uh, drink it for uh, 
going into the pantry. Well, they all have safe drinking water now at the city of Claflin. Uh, we completed the solid waste management plan this year. So if you want to know anything about landfill, compost, uh, anything related to solid waste, uh, how it is, where we are now, and where we need to be in five years, uh, that is available on our website. Uh, we provided our first $55 million loan to the city of Wichita in the state's uh, state revolving loan fund so that they can build a new drinking water facility. That was the first loan. We expect that over the entire program, we will loan them probably close to $250 million uh, for their drinking water pro, uh, new facility. And then lastly, uh, we have partnered with General Mills on a pilot system to generate carbon credits for farmers. This is a direction where I think there's a lot of, of potential. Uh, there are many industries that are trying to reduce their carbon footprint. They have to generate carbon as part of their process through CO2 emissions usually. And so if they want to be carbon neutral, they will need to find a place that they can buy uh, credits for uh, an action or activity that sequesters carbon and, uh, and cover crops and would be a great way to generate carbon credits to where the person that needs those credits would be willing to pay potentially a farmer who put any cover crops that they can get the carbon credits from. It. So that's in its infancy, but I think this is something that will interest many people once uh, uh, that system is in place. So challenges that are coming up, uh, greenhouse gas emission, I can, I do not know, and I don't think anyone right now knows where the Biden administration and EPA are going to go with greenhouse gas emissions, global warming, uh, CO2 regulations. Uh, th these are all things that we're all sitting on the sideline looking at, watching. Uh, but I, my personal feeling is that it will not surprise me if there is a push to start regulating uh, greenhouse gases uh, more than what they currently are. Uh, so our Clean Air Act folks are going to be very busy uh, in that area. I've already talked about program funding. I just, you know, again, if we keep squeezing the state general funds out, uh, we have to raise fees. Uh, drinking water system, uh, small drinking water systems are having a hard time meeting drinking water, safe drinking water act requirements uh, for small uh, communities. The rules are a federal law. They are one size fits all. They don't break it up by population. Uh, so the same rules apply to a small town as a lot of applies to a large town. And I was saying that the small drinking water systems are starting to have a hard time complying. Uh, there's a new, not new chemical, but there's a chemical called perfluorinated chemicals, and there's about 2,000 of them that has now reached our radar. Uh, EPA is starting to do toxicity tests on those. Uh, they seem to be highly carcinogenic, and they are chemicals that every one of us use every day. So it is concerning, but uh, and the chemicals that you're probably most familiar with is like Stain Master, uh, Teflon, uh, Vortex, uh, firefighting foam. Uh, these are all fluorinated uh, hydrocarbons that uh, look like they could be uh, highly carcinogenic. So these are gonna be in the environment in our homes uh, and industry has used them and we are starting to uh, look at impacts here in the state of Kansas. EPA 
is Leo, Leo I want to interrupt. Uh, we need to get some um, recommendations made on other programs. So uh, we'll, we'll save our questions for our deliberation, which we'll have to do next week, Tuesday, probably. Okay. All right. Uh, then I will Thanks. wrap up here real quickly. Cahill, uh, as you know, there's some discussion about replacing that in the docking building. Uh, we are having a hard time recruiting uh, employees and retaining them, especially engineers and geologists. And we are being asked to upgrade our IT systems. Uh, but when, you know, with the continued pressure on our fees, it's very hard for us to do that. And that is my last slide, and I will stand for questions. Uh, there are additional slides in the slide pack that I, um, I was not planning on going through those. Okay, thank you very much, Leo. Appreciate the report and the questions. We'll hold them for the next, for deliberation next week to um, <clears throat> take care of our other business, all right? All right, well, that's fine. Uh, if you have anything, just give me a holler. Okay, we will. Thank you again. <clears throat> well, committee, I, um, next we turn our attention to recommendations for the agency that we've uh, been working on. And we will start with uh, Kansas State Fair, which uh, we ended up um, the motion to add the $425,000 for the workforce in the event uh, 1.3 million of CARES money comes in, then that will be deleted by that. So. Um, that's to be a contingency on that happening. If that CARES money comes in, then we won't need to spend the $425,000 recommended. That was passed, and so I need a motion to recommend that um, um, to the final committee. Is there any questions? Senator McGinn. Motion's been made to recommend to the final committee the Ways and Means. Any, uh, somebody second that? Oh, Sen Senator Francisco. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Um, motion carried. It will be recommended to the Ways and Means Committee. Um, <clears throat> next uh, item is Department of Agriculture, which we um, have started on. We have, so far, we have committed to $250,000 for conservation districts and another 60000 for warehouse inspection fee money. And... Uh, and I'm going to direct your attention to this handout, which we, a summary of what we, what uh, was presented yesterday. And you notice on the, the bottom, there have um, $25,000 for state general fund for feral swine and 30,000 for litigation costs for, and I'm just going to, what we're going to do is if you want to include them, just say so, or raise your hand and we'll, whether you want those included or not. So we, we can set our taking motions for, we have to go through the water office. All of those will do the same thing. We'll mention those, and those are the ones you want to save. Senator Peck. Just a brief question slash comment on the 60000 for the grain warehouse inspector. I'm wondering if it would be good for us to make a note, and that's to reduce or offset uh, or keep the fee down, some, some type of wording type. That way, uh, ways and means will understand we didn't just put this money in willy-nilly. We did it because we want to keep fees down on our grain elevators. We can include that in the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Um, on the feral swine, uh, you want to add that to the report? You do? So hands. Okay. We'll include it. And we'll make a motion at the end of the day rather than just. And the $30,000 litigation cost for the final budget, they include it now as a as a as a as it being included in there. I did find out yesterday that we can't use water, state water plan funds for litigation. So that's just for, for our information. Senator Swab, Trust Straub. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all right. Um, I, I, after gathering more information, it's my understanding that the House also recommended 30,000 for 2022, correct? That is Could, could we also add that? Um, I imagine that this is going to be a long, drawn-out lawsuit, and I want to make sure that we're supporting our, our Department of Ag in this. I think the original proposal was for 21 and 22. Thank you. That works. Okay. What's the wish of the committee? All in favor of including that as, a, uh, as an addition? Raise your hand. 
You want to add, add, include it now. So, so this report. would be to include it now rather than simply Lay recommend. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of paying it now? Okay. Well, <clears throat> we'll include that. Now I need a motion to approve that. Uh, Thirty thousand dollar and the twenty five thousand for surface feral swine. So, Mr. Minter, Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, looking over this document, um, then what we really saw up to the other approved uh, adjustments, we had a fifty thousand uh, dollar surplus. Is that correct? The plus is minus. We end up with a fifty thousand dollar surplus. That's a negative, isn't it? It is. Fifty is well, isn't that what that is? Is that how that what that seems? I assume that's what it is. And then, so then, if we add these others, we're looking at uh, about um, what would it be uh, sixty-five thousand dollars above the proposed budget earlier. Is that correct? That's what the math is. Okay. Thank you, sir. Senator Francisco. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was supporting the review of litigation costs, and I know that you asked for who was in favor. I don't know if we asked who was um, not in favor of including it now. Let's go ahead if you want to make a statement about that. Um, I, again, because we don't have um, the information right now on what the Department of Ag uh, would do with that. Um, I would prefer that um, that be reviewed um, with the mega budget as as proposed and at least wanted to be on record supporting that. And I didn't raise my hand because I've been in contact with the department and we don't even know if 30,000 is going to be enough. But if you just want to do 30,000, then that's fine. My thought again, when you package the mega, which is not omnibus, which is going to be in about three weeks, the department said they would have more information and it can be put in then. But if you want to do it now. Senator Alley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't have any problem with doing it at uh, the mega bill. However, I think we need some documentation in there to remind them that uh, we approved doing that, we recommend doing that, and whatever number they can come up with is would be... Uh, <clears throat> we definitely want to highlight that it is there. Okay. The motion made is to include it now with the, along with the feral swine as part of our recommendation. Second for that? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. Motion, the motion carries. Committee, that's all I think on the Department of Ag that I have was mentioned. And uh, so now we need to make a recommendation to move that on to the final report for the Department of Agriculture. Need a motion. Let me again. clarify these other items that we moved around. We're, we're approving those. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'll make that motion. Second. Move and second that. We make we approve it for recommendation to the committee. And all in favor signify saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion carried. It will be moved into the final for the Department of Agriculture. That concludes it. <clears throat> Next on the item is, uh, uh, do you have a question, Senator, Senator Francisco? Um, so my understanding is, um, you know, we were looking at some of the things in the state water plan. Certainly the um, aid to conservation districts is an item also in that state water plan. So it is possible to assume that that money can be moved, but the grain warehouse inspector is not, the feral swine is not, the litigation is not. So I don't think that we can assume we're balancing it and, um, you know, we may, I'm not sure that also that I want to see the state water plan reduced by um, $50,000. So, um, you know, one, at one point, um, 
the aid to conservation districts had been larger. I don't know if there's um, other programs um, that the committee would like to see, but, but I hate to see a recommendation that overall reduces the expenditures from the state water plan. We don't have enough in that fund and those are very important. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Senator Straub. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in, in response to Senator Francisco's um, comments, I believe that the governor's request was to cut all departments by 10%. So I don't think that we can um, blame, you know, necessarily our committee for that. We're, we're, we're just simply making a recommendation to Ways and Means, but it's my understanding the governor had requested 10% cuts across the board. Senator Francisco. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is um, cuts from what the governor recommended for the state water plan. This is not, and, and the state water office made, in my understanding, made other cuts. So I think there, I mean, again, my only concern is, do we, it doesn't make sense to propose a budget that says we want to spend less in the state water, uh, less state water plan funds. That's not an agency budget. Am, am I misunderstanding this? Maybe Victoria can help me. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so with this $50,000 reduction, it would be $50,000 below what the governor has recommended because the two reduction lines that you can see, the 100,000 and the 360,000, the governor did recommend those. So you're taking $460,000 away, but you've only added back, whatever, $410,000. So it, it, it is $50,000 below what the governor has recommended currently. Senator Francisco. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to make a motion that we reduce the watershed conservation practices by 310,000 rather than 360,000. Is there a second? Um, I'm not putting it in the aid to conservation districts. I'm putting it in the watershed conservation practices. We have a motion and a second to uh, uh, put that money into the conservation, watershed conservation practices. And what was the amount? Um, it would be to reduce the, um, or change the reduction from 360,000 in that program to 310. Okay, all right. Yeah. So we're still reducing it, but... Um, All right. Just by three hundred and ten thousand. Okay. All right. Everybody understand what the motion is. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The question will be reduced by fifty thousand. Uh, committee on the, um, the rest of these um, samples here that was turned in. Um, I was going to do the same thing. If you're if you're in favor of it, leaving it like it is, or to make these recommendations, that's what we need to know. Because if they are not proved today, we can't put them on in later. So, um, is yes. This whole page. I apologize. I missed. Okay. Okay, that's my fault. But we are done. <laughs> I thought we weren't. So, okay, um, based on that, uh, motion is passed. We will um, ask to be that, include that in our recommendations for um, the water office. And then we can make a recommendation to the full committee. So since that motion took care of that, that and these other items aren't, aren't included. Therefore, we need a motion to send that to the, uh, recommend that to the Ways and Means Committee for final approval. Senator Alley. Okay, is there a second? Uh, Victoria, you have something to... I do, sir. I just want to clarify something just so that you're all um, aware. This on the, the white page for the or 
the page that I sent you, state water plan funds, some of those do fall under the Department of Agriculture. If it has KDA in parentheses after it, that's Department of Agriculture. So I just want to make sure you're all aware that you're affecting agriculture and water office with these motions, just to make sure. Okay, everybody clear on that? Okay. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Being done, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no, oppose no. The recommendation will be passed on the Raise the Means Committee. Committee, that's all we have for um, other than the KDA e budget, which we will um, take up to deliverance next Tuesday, and then that will conclude our report. So, did we do State Fair yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that very first one. Yes, we did that on the day they heard their. From our committee, um, eighty-nine was a signage bill, wasn't it? It's ready for final action. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. With that committee, we are adjourned. Thank you very much.